again, I'm Dr. Mountain. Welcome to the fifth episode. Maybe you've heard the saying that with only a few exceptions, there's only two things for adults to do in a bedroom, and one of them is sleep. And sleep is our important topic for today. Now that saying is important in the context of sleep hygiene and developing healthy sleep patterns. I often tell patients that there's not one medication or natural supplement you can take in replacement of sleep. I was watching a gastroenterologist recently talk about inflammatory bowel diseases and I was pleasantly surprised to see him talk about sleep and the benefits of melatonin. Now I love using melatonin with patients when it works, but I often find it's too little too late. That ship has sailed so to speak and excessive amounts of melatonin sometimes won't bring sleep back. If we wait to treat sleep until nighttime, it's understandable that people get prescribed sleep medications because at that point in time we need that heavy hitting treatment. But it's concerning to me when people get prescribed benzodiazepines like Ativan or Lorazepam because they can be so dangerous. Just, Just recently the Canadian psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson did a remarkably candid interview with his daughter. It was really quite heartbreaking. He described a series of incredible life events, including life-threatening medical problems with his wife that led to him seeing a psychiatrist who prescribed one of these benzodiazepine medications for sleep. Huge problems. I'll put a link to the uh, video so you can watch it below. If you're on benzodiazepines, obviously you can't just stop if you've been on them for more than a couple weeks. Um, just a lot of people take them for sleep or anxiety because they're so strong that they can seem to be the only thing that works. One of my favorite prescriptions for anxiety and health sleep is just to get out into nature. Go out on a bicycle ride. I like to go out on a motorbike ride. I can go way out into the back roads, into the back country. It's beautiful. So a more proactive approach to sleep is to treat the morning to ultimately have an effect on the night. Now we're not using a natural sedative in the morning. Instead, we are supporting the natural tendency for the body to work better with contrast. The body does work better on contrast. Contrast like sit down and eat, then run later. Don't eat and run together. Contrast daylight with darkness. Maybe if we stay up too late watching TV or doing video games or on our phone with blue light, we lose that contrast. It makes it very challenging for the body to know what time of day it is. Keep doing the same physical thing over and over. Maybe like a construction worker might get a repetitive strain injury. Or if you keep doing nothing, your body will also break down. It's the contrast that is healthy. Sometimes it's so great to get off the beaten path, get away from the traffic, away from the busyness, breathe the fresh air, and just listen to the wind through the trees, and relax. To know what morning treatments to use, sometimes testing can be helpful here. Usually saliva testing of cortisol, testosterone, and DHEA are helpful. There is nothing wrong with blood testing, it's just that if we only do a morning cortisol, then we aren't sure what your numbers are the rest of the day. Even a 24 hour urine cortisol will only catch people who are chronically high or chronically low. So if that's a relatively normal cortisol hormone curve through the day, if somebody's cortisol looks like this, the average by the end of the day caught on a 24 hour urine cortisol might be very similar to the, the normal average, but it doesn't catch these fluctuations. Where if we actually tested here and here, let's say for example, we would catch those variations from normal. So that sometimes we'll, we'll do saliva testing throughout the day rather than just banking all on a morning tests. So one more thing on that, cortisol is a good marker of your circadian rhythm. That's your sleep-wake cycle. Now as, now
now I drew it in red. As cortisol naturally or should decline, or we can get it to decline in the evening, then melatonin should rise up on its own. Okay, so depending on your lab testing or history, I would often use a non-caffeinated plant-based or herbal botanical treatment taken in the morning. These need to be carefully chosen as despite not having caffeine, some treatments can still raise blood pressure or aggravate anxiety. I seldom use a single ingredient and I change the combination depending if I'm trying to raise or lower blood pressure or treat anxiety or fatigue. Siberian ginseng is a common treatment in my practice, but some people still find it too stimulating, even though it's less stimulating than Panax ginseng, for example. I'll often use ashwagandha or even rolora, which is a combination of plants, to help moderate cort the cortisol response. These treatments may take a while to create that contrast that we were talking about. And remember, don't work out right before bed and then try to go to sleep while adrenaline and endorphins are still high. Natural remedies for sleep usually do not work quickly like Adamant does, but with the right treatment, you should start to see improvements over the course of a few weeks. Please subscribe and hit that like button, and I'll do my best to make more videos like this in the future.